Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Well, the first quarter was a tale of two really different environments. As expected, we incurred losses in January and February due to the negative impacts of the Omicron variant. We anticipated travel demand would rebound in March, and we were pleasantly surprised at how quickly it bounced back and the extent to which demand and booking surged. While we reported a Q1 loss, we were solidly profitable in March, actually not too far off of March 2019's profit. And while modest, I'm very pleased that first quarter unit revenues increased as compared to 2019. That was the first quarterly increase since the onset of the pandemic. So, but for the Omicron impact, we would estimate that we would have been profitable for the first quarter. In the first quarter, uh, total operating revenues were 91% restored to 2019 levels despite Q1 managed business revenues being only 45% restored. Looking forward, we are very encouraged with the bookings and revenue trends we are experiencing for Q2, which indicate operating revenues will be fully restored to quarterly record levels on stronger leisure and business demand. Our revenue initiatives continue to roll out, and Andrew will cover our new fair product in more detail, but we look forward to launching that this quarter and getting another one of our revenue initiatives in place and producing value. Our March results and our current outlook for Q2 represent tremendous progress in our recovery. Even if we aren't fully expected to be optimized with our network fully restored until the end of next year, I'm just really, really proud of our people for their progress today. We've come a long way. I'm just very thankful for their constant resilience. Now, key to our recovery is our continued hiring progress, and we now plan to hire and add over 10,000 new employees to the Southwest family this year and that's net of expected attrition. By the end of this month, we will have welcomed roughly 6,500 new employees in 2022, and that's 5,000 net of attrition. And I'm just really pleased with our hiring progress. We continue to work through lower available staffing and, and training constraints to keep pace with rebounding travel demand. And we recently reduced our summer flight schedules to match our capacity guidance as we prioritize our operational reliability. I believe we have already accounted for the impact of staffing constraints in our full year 2022 guidance on capacity of down 4% versus 2019. But of course, we need to trim more capacity. We certainly can, but I'm cautiously optimistic that we can get to a good balance of headcount to operate our planned flight schedules for the remainder of the year while setting ourselves up for resuming more material growth uh, in 2023. You've heard me mention these things before, but we remain focused on a few key priorities for this year. First, getting properly staffed and focusing on our people. Second, making progress toward our historic operational reliability and efficiency. Third, providing our legendary hospitality. And fourth, returning to consistent profitability. You know, it takes all 59,000 employees working together to execute on these focus areas and deliver a low cost, high-quality product with low fares and great customer service. Looking first at Q1, January and February passenger revenues incurred two main negative impacts. First, $380 million due to softness in bookings and elevated passenger cancellations attributable to the Omicron variant. And second, an additional $50 million in January due to flight cancellations related to available staffing challenges, which were made worse by winter weather. However, we experienced a very different dynamic in March, as we saw a surge in leisure travel and bookings, along with a significant pickup in close-in demand. The improvement in March exceeded our original expectations for both leisure and business demand. March managed business revenues were down 36% versus March 2019, compared to our latest guidance of down 40%, and put us back on a nice improvement trajectory from pre-Omicron performance in December of 2021. In fact, managed business revenues improved 34 points from January's down 70% to March's down 36%. We experienced higher managed business passengers, and most notably, March marked the first month since the pandemic began where managed business fares surpassed 2019 levels. Our revenue initiatives performed well during Q1, despite the Omicron impact. We saw benefits from our GDS initiative given the significant bounce back of business demand in March. We also had a strong performance from our loyalty program with other revenue up 43% versus Q1 2019, which was assisted by incremental revenue from our new co-brand credit card agreement with Chase. 
A nice attribute from our new co-brand credit card agreement is that the revenue stream is rather insulated or diversified from the passenger revenue impact from COVID waves, as long as consumers' spending remains healthy. And Q1 retail sales, spend per car holder, and overall portfolio size continue to grow versus 2019. Looking at Q2, the positive momentum continues, and we're expecting operating revenues to turn positive versus Q2 2019, estimated to be up 8% to 12%, despite capacity below 2019 levels, and managed business revenues yet to fully recover. As we were already operating at pre-pandemic load factors in the low to mid 80% range, our revenue improvement outlook is primarily due to higher passenger yields, both leisure and business. We expect another solid contribution from our revenue initiatives, in particular with GDS, as managed business revenues are expected to improve sequentially. April managed business revenues are expected to be down 30% versus April 2019, and we expect to see sequential improvement in May and June. In terms of network restoration, we will be roughly 80% restored by June based on trips. And based on our full year capacity guidance of down 4% versus 2019, we expect to be roughly 85% restored by December. As we have discussed, it will take us some time to rebuild the network that we want given current staffing constraints. We will continue to expect to restore the vast majority of our network by the end of 2023. And the first question will come from Ravi Shankar with Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, a quick question on the, on, on the corporate side. Uh, can you just give us a little more detail on what you expect the corporate ramp uh, trajectory to be through the rest of the year into next year? And also, we're hearing from some corporate accounts that they expect uh, a fair bit of competition uh, in the second half of this year going into 23 when it comes to negotiating uh, kind of just corporate travel agreements. Uh, just, just given that we're, we're kind of coming off this, uh, th- th- this this trough and everyone's going to be fighting for a slice of the pie, uh, do you have any visibility into that or not? Thank you. Hey, Robbie, it's Bob. I'll, I'll start, and then I'll let uh, Andrew uh, chime in on the, on more of the specifics. I think we, while the you know our managed business uh, recovery has obviously lagged leisure. I mean, leisure is well ahead of 2019 at this point. We've seen a really robust recovery. So I think you know we in March. Uh, we were down about 36% compared to 2019, but that's a 34-point recovery from January, which is just a really significant trend. Looks like April's going to be about 30, down 30, and I would expect that the, you know, for, from what we can see, the trends continue to improve through May and then through June. And while it's a long ways away, uh, you never, you know, it's all forecasts. I, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility that we could have managed business. Uh, revenues uh, fully recovered to 2019 levels uh, by the end of this year. But I'll uh, I'll let Andrew add uh, some details as well. So Andrew? Yeah, thanks, Bob. The only thing I'd, I'd add to that initial macro point of view is if you kind of go back further than January and, and kind of April of last year when corporates really started traveling again, we have a, a nice, strong uh, trend line, but it has some ups and downs with COVID waves. And so uh, now that we're kind of out of Omicron and seeing a sharp comeback, it's still on that same trajectory, which leads one to believe that it will get to what Bob said. So we have pretty good confidence in this in this growth because it's it's grown and rebounded strongly through at least two COVID waves so far. So that's uh, that's good news. And in regard to corporate uh, contracts, you know, a lot of them have become stale because there wasn't really a lot to renegotiate during the pandemic. So we fully expect there to be kind of a, a big season of renewal of contracts in the fall, as you mentioned. And given that during the period from pre-pandemic to now, we've greatly transformed our offering and managed business through both the GDS we've talked about, but also ramping up our uh, Southwest business uh, team with the tools for uh, TMCs and CTMs, uh, as well as uh, more account managers. We think that kind of broad-based renewal is actually beneficial for us in our play for a bigger share of this pie. So we're, we're encouraged by the renewal season coming up this fall. We have time for one more question. And that question will come from Sheila Kayelu with Jeff Reeks. Please go ahead. Hi, it's uh, Scott on for Sheila. Just on that managed corporate down 30% in April, is there any way to maybe parse out how much of that is restoration of 2019 managed corporate revenue and how much is coming from taking share with these new revenue initiatives you've put in place? 
Uh, sure, which I'm, I'm going to disappoint you is we're, we're um, we uh, that, that that's part of our, uh, our overall you know uh, revenue revenue initiatives, which we gave a benefit of one to you know 1.5 billion to Investor Day, and we're not decomposing those individually. Um, you can certainly uh, take a look in the ARC data and see our increasing composition of ARC uh, and uh, what that means for us getting more and more business travel. Um, but that restoration is, is a combination of of um, uh, what we had before and new stuff. The new stuff is really mostly share of wallet, if you will, for individual uh, entities. So the people with whom uh, we're doing business through the GDS, we were also doing business through our Direct Connect or uh, Southwest Business Swabiz uh, application before. So it's really about giving them, you know, multiple ways to purchase from us, whatever distribution channel they prefer, and we're seeing we're getting more of those accounts business uh, as we're giving them this option. And the next question is from Kyle Arnold from the Dallas Morning News. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my time uh, or taking some time. Uh, Have you done, made any more work, or is there anything specific you've done to solve some of the irregular operations problems? I know there's uh, a report about a meeting in Florida, you know, talk with the FAA about some of the uh, issues happening in there. What what all are you doing to make sure that, you know, some of the either tech or the staffing or compounding problems don't creep up again this summer. We've been talking uh, all morning long about our, our aggressive hiring plans, so adding people there. Uh, and then Andrew talked a little bit about uh, us re-optimizing our aircraft flow and our design toward uh, the shorter haul trips, and that's going to help our crew and our operational recovery. So uh, we feel that those are the three big pieces that we're in much better condition and place that we've been in uh, as we move forward. Uh, we do have, as you as you mentioned, we do have specific, and when I say we, I mean the airline industry has specific impacts with respect to Florida uh, air traffic control and travel through there, and it's a combination of problems down there. Uh, there's more of there's more commercial activity, there's more GA activity, there are more space shuttle launches. Uh, the weather patterns that go through there are, are complicating uh, all of that additional traffic. Uh, And then I think that uh, just like uh, everyone else going through with staffing, the FAA is going through staffing challenges as well. So there is a focus, an industry focus on that. And in May, uh, the FAA and and some of the uh, impacted carriers are going to talk about solutions to that specific airspace. So I think when you package all those things together, uh, we're in a much better uh, place going into uh, this summer than we were last summer. Thank you. And we have time for just one more question, and that question will come from Robert Silk from Travel Weekly. Please go ahead. Are you all getting many uh, calls or cancellation requests from individuals who are worried now that there's no mask mandate? And if so, uh, are you allowing cancellations in those cases? Robert, I... um... You know, we, we watch our we watch our customer relations calls and, and questions every single day. I, I haven't seen a material rise uh, in, in that uh, at all. You know, we re, we we survey our customers every single day, and I would just start with the percentage of customers that are comfortable flying. Just overall, is very very high. You know, it's ninety percent, ninety percent plus. The second is we also survey. Uh, how comfortable our customers are flying without masks. And uh, that number is, is also very much in favor of our customers being comfortable. Um, I, I, and just to mention on the mask, I'm, I'm very pleased for our employees and for our customers that they now have a choice. Uh, it's tough to wear the mask all day.